Hey guys, what's up? I am so happy to see you here. Uh, my name is Marina. I am a certified information systems auditor with the Tech News company. And today we're going to talk about the cloud infrastructure risks and controls. I hope you will like it and enjoy it. And without further ado, let's go. To better understand the risks and controls of the cloud computing environment, we need to first understand the main models of the cloud services provision, as well as the main deployment methods. So there are three main service models when it comes to cloud computing. Uh, these are the infrastructure as a service, platform as a service, and the software as a service model. To understand the difference between these, let's consider the main components that need to be managed when running an IT infrastructure. So we have the we have the operating system, the middleware, that is kind of a software that provides the general services to the applications besides those services that are provided through the operating system. For example, data management, application services, authentication, API management, and so on. Uh, we have the runtime component, which is more related to developers and is a kind of a software or an instruction that is built into the development environment uh, to make sure that the code executes in a proper way. We have applications or software, data, servers, virtualization, which is a kind of a software that separates the physical computing device into one or more virtual devices that uh, each can be used and manage to perform various computing tasks. We have storage and networking, that would be our routers, switches, clients, modems, and so on. <clears throat> so when all these components are managed by the company itself, it is considered the on-premises computing. Different models of cloud computing uh, offer to manage all or part of these uh, components. For example, in the infrastructure as a software platform, the company manages the operating system, the middleware, runtime, applications, and data, while the cloud service provider, I will call it CSP, uh, takes care of the service, the virtualization, the networking, and the storage. <clears throat> Some examples of the infrastructure as a service uh, providers include uh, like Amazon Web Services, DigitalOcean, Rackspace, or Linode. <laughs> I don't know if I pr I'm pronouncing it correctly. Um, I will check later and uh, in case I made some mistakes, I will <laughs> make another shot on the video. In a platform as a service model, uh, the company only manages the applications and data, while all other components of the infrastructure are managed by the cloud service provider. In a software as a service model, all the components are managed by the cloud service provider and the company are just the end user of the services and do not do any processing on their side. Some examples of such, uh, some examples of such uh, cloud service providers include, uh, for example, Google Apps, uh, Slack, Dropbox, Office 365 and so on. Now let's consider the main deployment methods very briefly. Uh, there is a private cloud, a public cloud, and a hybrid cloud. In a private cloud, a company has its own cloud infrastructure with its servers, uh, virtual desktops, applications, storage, which is usually managed by a company's IT team. Uh, thus, it has a higher level of security, but uh, also higher um, maintenance and operating costs. In a public cloud, the cloud infrastructure is shared between multiple companies or tenants, and that's the characteristics of the multi-tenancy. And the public cloud uh, thus has a lower level of security and also the lower maintenance costs. In a hybrid model, the uh, company may choose to use private cloud for the most business critical processes while using the public cloud, uh, one or more public cloud, for all other processes. Okay, so now let's talk about the risks and controls. Uh, independently of the cloud computing models or deployment method, the organizational objectives uh, remain the following. It is important to preserve the confidentiality of the sensitive data, to ensure the integrity of the data at rest and while in transit, 
to ensure the availability of data and information systems and to ensure compliance with all the relevant regulations, like policies, procedures, standards, and so on. Um, the first risk that we are going to talk about refers to the legal compliance. Uh, <clears throat> as cloud computing is provided over the internet, it may be transborder. For example, I work in a company located in Kazakhstan and we use the cloud computing services of the CSP from, let's say, United States. In Kazakhstan, we have different laws uh, regarding the data privacy, especially when it comes to the personal identifiable information. Uh, we as a company could be in violation of some regulations in, in other country while storing or processing information within the infrastructure of the cloud service provider. Also, the regulations in the country of a service provider may allow accessing company information even without the notification. So in terms of controls, it is important to first request the list of physical locations of the CSP assets, then review the regulations in the respective locations to ensure the compliance with organizational requirements with regards to data privacy. It is also a good practice to specify in the contract that the cloud service provider would not move the assets to the locations where the uh, regulations are not aligned with the company um, requirements. Another thing is for a company to ensure that data transferred from the company premises to the cloud service provider's premises are encrypted and a proper key management process is in place. Another risk is related to the physical security. When a company moves its data to the cloud infrastructure, they must still be in compliance with the corporate policy. At the same time, company data may also be accessed by the staff working for a cloud service provider, for example, for routine maintenance or backup purposes, which may be subject to the security policy of the cloud service provider. The risk is that there may be a gap between the, the the, between the corporate and CSP physical security requirements. Being an information systems auditor, you can recommend that the company requests the security policy of the cloud service provider and reviews it for compliance with the corporate security policy. It would be also good to specify in the contract that first, the CSP provides the evidence of independent security reviews, audit certification reviews, that meet the corporate requirements. And second, I require also that the cloud service provider complies with the corporate security policy and is obliged to implement the, to implement the proper controls to ensure uh, its alignment. <clears throat> when a company chooses to stop accepting services from the cloud service provider, the service provider should properly dispose of the data before providing the assets to a new client to prevent unauthorized access. If data are not properly disposed, they, um, there may be a risk that the regulations in allocation of a new client allow them to disclose the data of the previous tenant company. So from a control perspective, a company should request the CSP's technical specifications and controls related to the data disposal to ensure that they are in compliance with the company requirements. As we mentioned previously, in a public cloud, there are multiple tenants. So one cloud is used for more than one uh, client. And as cloud computing is an on-demand uh, service, it is able to dynamically change the allocation of resources between these tenants. For example, let's say that the CSP currently offers 60% of its storage capacity to the first company and 40% to another company. Should the first company decrease the consumption of the storage services, CSP will reallocate the freed resources to another tenant. The risk is that in such a case, sensitive data could be disclosed if the storage has not been properly and thoroughly scrubbed. Also, when reallocating the resources, the attackers may take advantage of this shared information, for example, by analyzing the shared uh, routing tables to map the internal network topology while preparing for an attack. Surely, the best control in such case would be to use the private cloud but it's not always affordable. Uh, so to prevent such risks in a public cloud, the organization should request the CSP's technical details for the resources reallocation process and um, review it to ensure that it is in line with the company requirements. It should also be specified in the contract with the CSP who is allowed to access the company data, including specific um, CSP employees, 
uh, with their roles and the potential external parties. Moving on, we have another risk of application disposal, which is similar to the data disposal. When using a platform as a service model, there is a risk that upon the contract termination, a CSP will not properly dispose of the application data that may include the applications themselves or respect to backups, or the source code, the object code. If not properly disposed, such data may be unintentionally disclosed, creating an opportunity for an application attack. Or they also may be copied, thus violating the company's uh, intellectual property rights. To reduce the possibility of such risk, it is important to have uh, the contract require that the proper disposal of applications is performed, including objects, source code, and the backups destruction. <clears throat> As regards to the intellectual property, it is good to include a non-compete clause in the contracts. Uh, incident management. In a public cloud infrastructure, if one of the companies is compromised due to some cyber attack, it may expose the cloud and other companies to the attack. The best control here would be to use the private cloud, but if it is impossible, the company should ask the CSP to have the contract require the company to be included in the CSP's incident management process and be notified immediately of any attack. Contracts should also include the clauses and controls to ensure that the enterprise contracted capacity is always available and cannot be directed to other tenants without proper authorization from the client company. Okay, what do we have else? Mm, the hypervisor attacks. Okay, so as we mentioned earlier, in a cloud infrastructure, the resources of physical servers are distributed to create multiple virtual servers using a hypervisor. A hypervisor is a piece of software that provides the link between the virtual machines and the underlying physical resources that are required to run these machines by using the so-called hypercalls. If an attacker gains an access to the virtual machine in the cloud, he could make fake hypercalls to introduce malware or cause a certain disruptions in the hypervisor behavior. As a soft preventive control, company could require the CSP to include a right of audit in the contract, as well as require that a CSP implements the necessary security controls to ensure that it is aligned with the company's security policy. From the CSP side, such security controls may include separating the virtual machine network from the management network, so in case a VM is compromised, it will not affect the hypervisor security. Other controls include setting the access privileges, disabling unnecessary services, having physical security controls in place, using network security tools, ensure hypervisors are properly and timely patched. Okay, now let's talk about other risks related to the cloud infrastructure. In a public cloud, where one cloud may have hundreds of tenants, CSP are able to introduce, CSPs are able to introduce patches in their applications without the proper approval or even notification of the clients. In such case, a company could have a lack of control over the release management process and uh, could be subject to unexpected side effects of the improper patching. Few controls may include introducing the right of audit clause in the contract, requiring the CSP to implement necessary controls to ensure alignment with the company's security policy, specifying in the SLAs the schedule of patches and software releases. Poor access management processes may result in, for example, a forgery or theft of valid user credentials or a common technical practice like administrator permissions override. The controls for the above risks are similar. It is always a good practice to include a right of audit clause in the contract, as well as require the service provider to implement proper controls to ensure the compliance with the corporate security policy. And if possible, provide also the evidences of independent security reviews. When it comes to cloud computing services, it is usually very easy for a company to contract them, especially in a software as a service model. Such facilitated procurement process may lead to the oversight of important contract provisions. It is recommended that the companies hold cloud service procurement processes to the established standards. 
Finally, when a company needs to perform an audit or when there is an investigation ongoing, the risk is that the CSP cannot provide timely support in, for example, providing the information such as logs, traces, system images, etc. Companies should ensure that the contract allows a right of audit clause and requires a CSP to provide security audit reports by trusted third parties. Company could also request um, that the CSP provides support, especially in providing the information for forensic analysis. If this is not possible, company should request to authorize trusted third parties to perform the forensic analysis when necessary. Okay, guys, that is it for today. I hope you enjoyed it. I hope you learned a lot from, uh, from this video, uh, from this tutorial. And if so, please subscribe to my channel and give me a thumbs up. So I wish you a good night. Bye-bye.